Hello and welcome back to Chatterbox, where I'm delighted to say we're joined by Hall of Fame promoter Frank Warren. Welcome, Frank. Now, before we talk about the boxing, how are you doing? I know you've had some major back issues in, in the recent months. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm getting my, at my age, the body's falling apart, but I'm, I'm doing okay. I can't complain and I'll be back in action and I hope I will be at the next show. Yeah, this one will cheer you up, Frank. You talk about bodies falling apart. I done the dad race at my little boy's school sports day and pulled my hamstring. You want to see the state of it? Big bruise right up the back of my leg. Oh, sorry. So I'm, I'm young on man the scrap like heap. You. Uh, a young man like you. I'm an old geezer. You're a young man. What's going on? <laughs> By the two way, two very sharp job. minds, though. You've you done a very good job on Saturday. Oh, good, thank you. Good work. Thanks, Frank. Pleasure. <laughs> right, let's let, let's let's start with Saturday's show in Belfast. It wasn't the result that anyone wanted. Mick Conan obviously losing the main event. Now, the big question is, can he come again? For me, it just wasn't his time. You know, um, he, I thought I, I thought at times he was getting he got caught. He's a very brave guy. We know that, and he tried his heart out. But I think the fellow was just a little bit too much for him. But it doesn't mean he can't come again. And there's some good fights if he still wants to carry on boxing that can be made and get himself in, back into a position. And I think a real good domestic fight would be him and Nick Ball. would be a tremendous fight between the two of them, which could go on in Belfast because there's such a great audience over there and such an appreciated boxing. They're like boxing connoisseurs. And I think that would be a great fight to put on in Belfast. But look, you know, Mick at the moment, I'm sure, has got a million things on his mind. You know, he's got to think through what he wants to do, but whatever he wants, um, we certainly have some fights there if he wants to continue. And I don't think there's no reason why he shouldn't continue. Uh, after after a knockout loss like that, and that's a second one um, in a number of fights, Frank, do you think, do you think Mick would, would take a Nick Ball fight, he's very aggressive. He's very, he can punch really, really hard. Do you think that's a fight that, that he, he would be interested in? I think it, uh, for me, and I'm being sort of probably very commercial and blunt about it, it's a commer it, it is a commercial fight. And it'll gauge who Nick Ball is and whether he's ready for the big time or not. You know, you know some people have got views on that. And uh, you know, other people think that um, he's, not, you know, he's, he's not quite ready yet but we would find out if we made that fight. And you're right what you say, Carl, you know, he has had two knockouts, but um, if he is going to continue, I mean, you can't go back, go backwards. You've got to get start at a certain level. And I think, you know, him and Nick, I think would be a, a, a really good domestic bust up. I think it'd be, a, you know, an inter, you know for, for everybody to watch because the styles will make the fights. And by the way, whilst we're on that subject, it was a very good win for Nick, but it was a tragic win. You know, Ladumo Lamarti is uh, in hospital. He's uh, still in Belfast. He's in a, an induced drug-induced coma, which uh, anybody who has a bad head injury is uh, is put into, whether it be a car crash, a rugby injury, and certainly as far as con he's concerned, a boxing injury. Um, but he's in a good place. We've uh, we're flying his family over. Oh, his family may be over here now. We we brought them over so they can be his bedside when he wakes up. You know, it was a, it's a tragic ending. It's a great shame. It's something us in boxing all worry about at all times. But I, you know, I genuinely believe that the, you know, he showed what he was made of. He was a he was a very tough competitor, and he'd probably give Nicky's hardest fight yet. And if he if he's fighting like he is now in the hospital, I'm sure he's going to come out of that to be with his family and we all wish him the best and wish him to come through this and uh, and get back to and then, as i say get back to his family absolutely i think that we all here you know echo those sentiments and, and wish him well and um yeah wish him good health for sure now um there's been, there was been a, there's been a lot of fights going on last week it was super super busy now pierce o'leary he, he continues to shine this was his latest knockout by the irishman let's take a look Talking. That was a fantastic shot. He's done really well to get up from that. 
Victor Lothan, the referee, having a close look. It could be all over here in this first round. He's going looking for him, O'Leary. Needs to go to the body. Oh, he's got oh. it. That's it. Big right uppercut, and the referee sees his head rock back, sees his leg stiffened, says enough is enough, and there is the most dramatic start imaginable. Frank Carl, what did you make of that fight? Well, look, you know, I'm a big fan and I'm really delighted that he's with us and he's on BT. He is a tremendous, tremendous prospect and he's a good finisher. And when he gets, if you get someone in trouble, it's all over. And that's what he did. And he done it in, in good style in that first round. And, you know, we're going to step him up. But I believe by the end of the year, he'll be in some sort of big title fight. Yeah, I think he's a really good fighter, Pierce O'Leary. I, I think that... I suppose Irish boxing took a bit of a hit over the last couple of weekends with Katie Taylor and Gary Cully losing, and then obviously Mick Conlon as well. So I think coming through, you got to be looking at who's who's the next big stars coming through, and and I think at the top of that list, it, it's got to be Pierce O'Leary. He can he can really really fight, and just just as I said, he needs to go to the body as he was going head hunting after he'd hurt hurt the opponent. He he, not, he he stops him with a left hook, so I was uh, I got that wrong, didn't I? It was a lovely uppercut, uppercut he threw as well there. But he's a, you know, he's a very very good finisher, and I think that um, Alan Smith's done a brilliant job with him. I mean, he re he's a dedicated, dedicated um, uh, uh, boxer. He really trains hard, and you know, he's willing to live away from home to to you know to make his way in the game. And uh, those rewards are all going to come come for him. In what all that sacrifice he's putting in is going to is going to work out for him. I, I really genuinely believe that. Right, let's move on to the heavyweights. Rumors: Daniel Dubois against Alexander Usyk. It's happening, right? It's on. Uh, they won the purse bid. Um, Usyk's people, K two, they won the purse bid. They bid eight million dollars for it. They outbid us by three. Um, they had 75% of the purse bid to play with because their boxer gets 75%. I'm sure they've done a deal with him. So Daniel walks away with gross $2 million before all his stoppages on the fight. Um, and I don't know what Us is getting, but if he's, if he's gets $6 million, um, that's much, much, much less than he would have got if he had fought Tyson. And it also determines his value because I, I genuinely believe if Daniel Dubois and Tyson Fury had gone to purse bids, that bid would have been around £30 million. Easy. So Tyson's right in what he says. Who's the attraction? Who's the draw? And it's him. And, you know, in the meantime now, they probably think in their minds that this is going to be a basically a, a workout for Usyk, and they're going to be shocked because Daniel will... I, I honestly, genuinely believe Daniel will knock him out. I think he'll be too big for him, too strong for him. He's gonna, you know, he's gonna come away with those three belts. I think one thing that that may benefit him from from this whole change of trainer scenario. Obviously, Don Charles is a, is a very good trainer, but with with his previous gym, there's a lot of fighters who are requiring a lot of time. Don Charles can be on Daniel Dubois 100 percent and and look after him and 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 completely put all his energy into him ahead of a massive fight. So that's maybe something that he wouldn't have had if he'd have stayed where he was. I agree with that. You know, he, he's the set, he is the number one guy there, and he's in the number one fight. I mean, this is this is the uh, this is the bit. You know, this is the real, real big time. You know, he's be, he's fighting an undefeated guy who holds three of the belts. It's a massive key to the future. We've got Tyson, who's who, who also will fight um, in in early early uh, autumn. So he's there, ready to go. And if he comes away with that, just think what we can build, the fights we can make, the fights we can build. They're huge. So there's a lot of things there. A lot, you know, a lot, there's a big carrot there for him. It's a huge carrot. And if he wins it, he's, I mean, he's going to make seriously big money. He's going to be in the big time. And, you know, that, that'll be it. It'll be, you know, it'll be what we set out to do with him, which we, we've more or less got there with him when we, when we turn pro. I said he'll win a title. He's won a, a version of the WBA title. Now he's, now he's in the real big time. Well, we're going to see whether he deserves to be there. But he will get all the attention. You know, Don's, I don't think Don's got a lot of fighters around him 
irrespective of that, you know, Don's not stupid. He knows that uh, if if Daniel comes through this, he knows himself it's going to change his life as well. So he'll be putting all his energies into it. There were some suggestions that Tyson Fury would be fighting Zhang, but it looks like now it'll be Joyce Zhang too after Joe accepted the rematch clause. Now we've got Joe on the show after the break. And is it a risky fight for him to take on given what happened in the first time where we saw Zhang repeatedly catch him? So there's, there's a lot of stuff for Joe to work on with his trainer, Salah. I, again, I watched that fight on TV. And for me, he, you know, nearly every fight he's had, he's taken, I say, unnecessary shots. I don't like seeing somebody taking a shot to land a shot or taking a couple of shots. But what Zhang managed to do, because he was a southpaw as well, and I think Joe struggled a bit with that, uh, to settle into a rhythm with it. And I think Joe also came in a little bit lighter than he should have done. Um, but what Joe did, he, it wasn't like he was, he was wobbling or anything. It was it's just that his eye was gone. His eye went. He had a bad eye injury, and he couldn't carry on with it. And it was as simple as that. Um, he's got to make significant changes for the next fight. He can't do what he did last time. Um, for me, it would have been interesting if he hadn't had the eye injury and that fight had gone into the later rounds, what would have happened? Because before the fight, I felt that Joe... As the fight went on, I felt that it would become his fight. I thought, as the you know, as the more you know, we get into the sort of second half of the fight, I thought he, I generally thought he would come through, and that's what I think. If he can deal with the southpaw stance, that's what I believe will happen in the next fight. But it's going to be can he change what he did last time? Because if he does what he did last time, then he's going to be in trouble. That's what I, I, I'm of the same opinion as you, Frank. I think that Joe, although he was, he was behind on points and, and Zhang was, was, was out boxing him at times, there was just signs where he was coming back more into the fight and Zhang was starting to tear a little bit. And my belief going into the fight anyway was always that it wasn't going to be easy, but Joe would have stopped him late. And it may well have happened if obviously the eye, the eye injury didn't occur. Is there a little bit of a worry there that we've never seen Joe cut up like that or marked up like that and then in, in this fight we saw potentially a wobble in 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 the early stages and, and then the eye blew up and we know joe takes like you know like you said you don't want to say unnecessary shots but he sometimes takes a shot to to, to, to get one off is is that something you should be thinking about and what would salas be telling joe and what would they be working on in the gym well, I think they'll be working on the Southpaw style. And they've got, I mean, look, look, they've got it first. It's not like he's training for a fighter who he doesn't know. He shared a ring with him. So he knows what Zhang's strengths are. I and mean, he knows what his weaknesses were in that fight. So he's got to work on his weaknesses. And it's really simple. He's got to work. He's got to move his head. And, and as you say, but, you know, when, two, when big guys like that are throwing punches, they hurt. We've seen Tyson on the floor and get up. You know, Joe wobbled. But the bottom line of it is he didn't go over and he's tough. He's got, he has got a good chin, but I don't want to keep seeing his chin getting tested because he's got a good jab. I mean, when you look back at the fight he had prior to that, against Parker, he boxed extremely well. But he, there were times in that fight that he caught, got caught again with big shots. Frank, before we let you go, just a, a, a quick mention of what's coming up for BT, what's coming up uh, for you guys. Let the fans know. I'm sure they're. Uh... They're eagerly awaiting the news. Well, we've got a good show on the night. We've got uh, David Adelaide back out again, undefeated heavyweight. You know, is he going to be the star of the future? He's looking really good at the moment. He's in a good fight. We've got Mark Chamberlain also undefeated on that card. Um, we've got young Royston on there. We've got a lot of our young talent on that show. So I'm really looking forward to it. That's going to be great. And then I think we move on to Telford. We've got some great fights going on up there. So we've all, all, you know, we've built quite a good audience up there in the Midlands. So I'm really looking forward to, to that show, and I think that's going to be exciting. And uh, we're about to announce uh, uh, quite a few dates in the next week or so with some of our really big fighters. So we'll be letting people know what's happening, for example, with Anthony Yard, Hamza, Dennis McCann, obviously Tyson, and, uh, and uh, f a few of the other young guys that we've got coming through. So it's all exciting times. And it'll be on, by the time those fights are announced, they'll be on TNT. There we go. We're all looking, we're all looking forward to that. Seems like boxing fans are in for, a, for an absolute treat over the couple TNT. of months. This is proper TNT. This is dynamite stuff. This is explosive <laughs> fights. 
There we go. He's, he's already he's already got the line. He's already got the lines. That's all we've got time for in part two. Thanks, as always, for joining us, Frank. Now, we've just been talking about Joe Joyce. And after the break, we'll be joined by the juggernaut himself. So don't go away. <laughs> 